It is Wednesday, March 20th, and we're sitting at yet another all-time high. I'm really happy about that. Gotta get used to saying it over and over again. Another all-time high. Another all-time high. We gotta get to a million somehow, right? So, in a good mood because of it. We have gained about $400 since yesterday. Feeling pretty good about that. And after I give you a quick overview of what's happened and the trades that have happened and some of the beginners of today, I want to talk about a really ominous sign that happened today in the markets that does not pretend well, in my personal opinion. I watched the news for a little bit and it seemed like the anchors didn't really care about the signal or what this means and what this implies, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So let's dive into the portfolio here. So the account went up about $400. Oh, this is the old time chart. But man, that old time chart is starting to look pretty impressive, huh? So um, the daily chart, with this really big move right here, I'll talk about it in a second. The biggest contributors for today were Apple. Well, actually, we could go like this. We just click this button here. And then we go, oh, no, that button. That's total return. Today's return. And you can see Apple returned $181. And then C-SPAN 31, Russian market 24. I reduced the Russian market position quite substantially. Wheat and precious metals $30. URG 21, URA 18. U, 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 negative 6. So these are the uranium stocks. So <clears throat> what else happened? I sold another 200 shares of EXK at the price of, let's take a look at the SIG history here, 273. So we jumped back over 270 and I did sell at a penny higher than I sold 200 shares at last time. But these gains are getting harder and harder. And I discussed in the previous video log that the silver spike hasn't really happened. And so I'm trying to slowly unload the positions and hopefully I'm out of it by the end of March or even April and halfway into my April. Cause I don't, if that, if the spike doesn't happen to then, I don't think it's going to happen until there's another market turmoil that sends the base metals into decreased mining production. Um, I might talk about that topic at some point again, but, not today. So, XK gained, unloaded some of the position, and other trades. We got we're getting dividends. That's it. Basically, I'm just waiting for some dividends. Oh, I really tried to put on another um, call credit spread for Spotify, but it just wouldn't go. The trades didn't fill. Maybe I'm trying to sell too many contracts at a time, but it didn't happen. And so, too bad. No extra money. No extra money. What else happened? Nothing really eventful. That's about it. We're just sitting at all-time high. Now, let's talk about the spike a little bit. So, the account was sitting pretty flat and waiting for one big event. And what was that big event? The big event was the Federal Reserve announcing that there's going to be no interest hikes. On this meeting and probably in the future for the rest of the year, for this meeting, the chance of them having a price hike, I think the markets thought it was like 1.5% or something like that. So very low percent. Um, anyways, so it wasn't too much of a surprise that they didn't hike, but what was a surprise is the fact that overall, on average, the Fed thinks that there will be no more raise hikes for the rest of the year. That's it. And we're done. So let's take a look at how this event played out. If we go to SPY, which is the exchange traded fund that tracks the S&P 500, you'll see it's cruising here at 281 and all of a sudden, boom, 
282.44, 283.3 in a matter of just a half an hour. So <clears throat> that's not surprising because the markets like liquidity, they like low interest rates, they like accommodative policy that's supportive. But what nobody really talks about, or I didn't hear anybody talk about, is this right here going from here, from 283.3 all the way back down to 281.62 by the close and now after hours we're down to 280.96 21.39 sitting at, at the moment so all the gains have reversed post meeting post announcement so why is that an ominous sign why is that a bad sign well that means the market is not happy with just holding things where they are. They're not happy with it. They want more. So they're a bit spoiled now. They've had their their, their easy monetary policy since December. They've had the reversal, the, the, the Fed pivot it's called. And they want a more dovish Federal Reserve. What does dovish mean? Dovish as opposed to hawkish is a Federal Reserve that acts in an accommodative manner, meaning lower interest rates, quantitative easing, programs that quote-unquote stimulate the economy, and a hawkish Fed means quite the opposite, a, a Federal Reserve that tightens uh, financial conditions, that increases interest rates, forces interest rates higher, that unwinds balance sheets it's not st stimulative it makes it harder for stocks and since stocks are priced in with interest rate, interest rates in mind it takes a really big toll on the stock market and we saw that in december so the federal reserve many believe got scared because of that event and that's why they reversed policy and now they're back to, instead of normalizing, they're back to being patient and holding, which are the, you know, the, some of the key words that, it, you know, they've used is being patient. So now that the market is not just happy with being patient, what do they want? They want lower rates. <laughs> That's what they want. So it's troubling. Because the market is not satisfied with just being here. It's just not satisfied with just having low rates and being easy. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the rates that we have currently. They want lower rates and it shows right here. Look, it's kind of like, it reminds me of this story, right? So my parents, they give their dog a bone when they want, when they want him to behave, right? And so that's all good and gravy, and that worked for a week, worked for two weeks, worked for three weeks, worked for four weeks, worked for five weeks. And then after a few months, the dog ate the bone real quick, and then it started misbehaving again. So what did my parents do? They gave him another bone. So now the dog knows that it can get another bone after the first bone. So guess what happened the very next week? It ate the first bone real quick, boom, asked for a second bone. <laughs> That's exactly what I feel like is happening with the markets right now. They got what they want, but they're used to getting what they want, so they want more. They want a second bone. Who knows, maybe if they're not, um, if they haven't had enough, maybe they want a third. So it's it's one of those situations it feels like where you give you know a dog a finger it's your entire arm or whatever the saying was so that's the kind of feeling i get that that's happening right now with the markets but what am i going to do about it nothing i'm just going to do exactly what i have been doing i've already deleveraged my account um i've already gotten rid of the Robinhood gold leverage i'm no longer really borrowing any money just two thousand dollars but it's fine and um, I'm waiting. If the market starts correcting, 
then I will become more and more aggressive. I will, here's what I'll do. I'll get rid of the SH, my little tiny hedge here. Let's see how big it is actually. I have this to convert into stocks a little bit over thousand dollars. I have my options uh, money that I can use. And so I would just be buying more. And then I have the leverage that I, that I can access through Robinhood Gold. So I have all of these things that I can use to go really aggressive on the dips, which is exactly what I want to do here. Let's see if it show me. There we go. I'll have $50,000 worth, uh, assuming my account stays over $50,000. I'll be able to get $50,000 extra buying power and really lever this account up. So that's what I plan on doing. It's really... It's not going to be that complicated. I, I need to work on personally my discipline, right? So I got to stick to that plan and not really overreact. And I'll just let the portfolio go up. As long as it's going up, then fine. That's great. I can keep scoring all-time highs. But if the market dips down, then I'm going to be going all aggressive into some particular place that I think they're going to work at that time. And... And that's the plan. Be aggressive when you have to and be passive now. Um, all right, I think that's it for today. Well, I've just talked about the um, the dovish statement from the Fed and how I think it's kind of an ominous sign. And also told you what I plan on doing about it. And we gave a little review of the account. I think that's about enough for today. Hopefully I see you all tomorrow. Peace out.